we'll both be dead the next time we anybody talks about a lease like this on this pro on a piece of property, or the next generation will be here, wondering what the heck did we do? So we need to take our time and look at this thing and make sure that we're doing the best we can with the information that we have. You know, if 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 you don't want them to hold a, a piece of property by production, then you got to start by saying, we want a clause that says. After 15 years, we'll renegotiate, even if you do drill well. Again, they're going to look at you like you're, like you're nuts. But you, you look at the industry like it's, it's a barge going down a river. And we're trying to turn this barge. It's turning. People are getting more money for bonus payments. People are getting higher royalty rates. And all that. It's starting to turn, but one of these other clauses they're fighting back, you know, they, they don't want it to turn that much. But as mineral owners, you've got to start there, I, I believe. You've got to start there and ask, and, and at some point demand it, that that's what you need. And then you're, you're looking at your own situation on what can you stand to lose and what do you stand to gain. And I, I say this is, is respectfully too, but if, if I'm 90 years old and they want to give me a million dollars right now, and I got no kids, and nobody to give it to, give me the million dollars, and I don't care what you do with royalty, right? But if I'm, you know, because I want the money now. It just depends upon what's important to you as an individual. And um, if you want a higher royalty rate for your, for your next, the next generation to live with, then you fight for that. If you don't want them uh, dumping water all over your place, then you fight for that. If, uh, you know, this whole, in this area, it seems that it, we've gone from a lot of legal fighting and going back and forth with leases. Now we're starting to see gas wells get drilled. Now we're starting to talk about environmental issues. Of what the heck is that? Why is there mud rolling down the street? Why, is there, why are the roads being torn up? What you, again, what are you going to do with that water? And, and the time to talk about that is at the lease stage, the best you can. And try to address it. Because once you once the construction starts and once they get going, they're they're business people. They need to, you know, their goal is to get gas out of the ground and, and make money. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you 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 want to keep the control. You want to keep control. Any questions so far? Please ask. Anything. Okay. Know what you own. This, this, this presentation is geared towards Oklahoma and Texas, which is where they all come from. But it doesn't talk a lot about meets and bounds here in West Virginia and, and the, the descriptions you have on your properties and when it's meandering up the creek that you own and you own on the left side of the creek and, and all that, and you, you're going, huh, what do I, what do I actually own? Well, you, you, you can draw it out yourself or you can find somebody that can, that can work with the description and try to try to give you, there's a lot of mapping out there that you can do that you can, and the gas company will show you and it will do that. Um, one of the things we want to see is when they come to you and start talking lease negotiations, ask them what their plans are. Get a copy of the map that shows if you're going to be in a unit, what's my unit look like? Where do I fit in that unit? Am I right dead in the middle? Or am I on the edge or, or what? But get a, get a visual of what, what they got planned. More often than not, they've, they've got plans. Uh, I don't think you're going to see them very often going out there spending a whole lot of money and going, I don't know where we're going to go yet, but we'll let you know. So know where the pipelines are going to go. Know where, just know where that stuff's going to go. How do you, what's your definition of unit? Unit is a, a uh, typically a rectangle that is a, a several pieces of acreage usually contiguous, that are put together for a, it's called a drilling unit. Um, and that way if, if they, and, and some of them go 640 acres, which is by rule, typically on deep wells. Uh, but they'll look at it and go, we want to put together 640 acres. And if we drill anywhere in that 640 acres, everybody that's identified in that unit gets paid something. If, if, if they don't drill on your property, you may not want them drilling on your property. And that's the thing you look at at the lease. If you look in your, you're in the unit, you go, I don't want you physically on my property. Okay, fine. 
then we won't drill on your property. But you'll still receive revenue from that unit because you're a part of the unit. And it's a calculation of acres, how many, how many acres you have within that unit by the amount of royalty rate that you've agreed to within your lease. So, you, and, that, and that, that helps a lot of people. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing people with 50 acres, people with five acres, people with 100 acres being included in these things that you would not have seen five or 10 years ago. Because they're not gonna, on 50 acres, it's less likely that they're gonna come in and drill a well. They're not gonna drill a horizontal well, which is all they're doing, is my understanding. Or the majority of what is happening here is the horizontal drilling. And uh, you wanna, it's not a bad thing to be a part of a unit if you have 50 acres. It's not a good thing to be a part if you have 1,000. You know what I mean? If you, have a, if you have a large acreage, there's no reason to be a part of a unit. But if you have smaller acreage, then there are advantages to it that, that you, you may never get a well drilled, but that may be what you want, but you're still receiving revenue. You're not going to see, receive the, it, it's just the one-eighth split up that everybody gets, you know, the, the piece gets all split up. Is that the same as pooling? 